What's up everybody? So we're back on the shop with another Shop Talk Tuesday and in this episode we're going to talk about what it was like being a full-time knife maker, what did I learn from being a full-time knife maker, and would I do it again? So to start this off, was being a knife maker awesome? Yes, of course, I am still a knife maker. I'm just not a full-time knife maker. I'm a part-time knife maker again. So was it awesome? Yes, it was absolutely a blast and I loved doing it. Now, it's one of those things where you actually get to see what it's like to do it for a living, meaning making sure that you're creating posts on your social medias, making sure that you're actually making enough knives to keep up with demand, to be prepared to go to shows and make sure you have everything set up so that you can actually go to a show and display your stuff and have everything set up for a table and a booth and all of those things it took a little bit to get used to that aspect of it and doing batch orders and doing things like that doing more custom orders for customers as opposed to custom orders that I just came up with out of the blue doing that stuff was kind of new to me because prior to that I always told people I was a youtuber who made knives not really a full-time knife maker that did YouTube because most of the stuff that I made was for YouTube and then it went on my website and people would buy it. This was a little bit different. I had to make knives for the website so that I could have a constant income stream plus I needed to make YouTube videos to make sure people understood that I was selling knives. So it was good media presence for me. Now with me going back to working a full-time job it's going to be pretty nice because I'm going to have that income plus the knife making income that I was able to kind of set up for myself while being a full time knife maker. I've got a website, theriversexperience.com, that has a whole bunch of knives on it. So I've got that income stream already set up and working to where now all I've got to do is just keep up with it, which is going to be pretty nice because I can do that and work this job. Now, the cool thing about the job that I'm doing, I work for Pepsi and I'm gonna be working evenings, which is like 4 p.m. to midnight. So during the week, I will still be able to come out here to the shop, make knives, film, do all that stuff. Now what I'm probably gonna go back to doing is releasing videos that are built because I don't have to worry so much about making so many knives all the time. I can just focus on going back to doing the cool builds and the creative stuff and have a f just a blast doing things like that because the knife making is going back to my extra income and not my primary income. So this is going to be pretty cool. Now things that I kind of learned from doing this, it would be you have to have something else that you make. So if you're going to be a knife maker full time, you can't just make knives. If you look at a lot of the people who make knives, the ones that are, I guess you could say, primarily knife makers, they have a big enough presence that whenever they make a knife, people are just just lining up to buy that knife. Or whenever they release 10 knives, they're sold in like minutes. Those people can just create knives, call it done, don't have to worry about it because they're going to sell out of their inventory anytime that they have inventory. For someone like me or a lot of other people who are knife makers, you need to have something else that you do. So you look at Kyle Daly, he makes hammers for like the straightening hammers. He makes all these cool little jigs and sanding things and sanding sticks. You look at Dennis Tyrell. He's going to be making his sanding sled. He makes like mag chucks. He has his sharpening system. He, he has a lot of stuff. A lot of the people who are knife makers who are doing this full time or going to full time, they have other things that they do on top of knife making so that they have that good steady income stream that's not just dedicated to the knives that they sell. Whenever I started this, I didn't have anything like that set up. So as I move forward into this, going back to part time so that I can eventually go back to full time, I need to think about what I'm going to do on top of knife making 
so that if I decide to go back to doing knife making full time, that I have that constant revenue stream. Things that I can sell that aren't three, four hundred dollars. You know, coming up with an idea that I can put out there and sell and have a constant thing, whether it be, uh, I'm not going to be a hammer maker because I've got hammer makers that I support, especially Two Bastards, Texas Smithy and Supply, the sponsors for the channel, the sponsors my hammers, absolutely awesome people. All their links are in the description below if you want a cool hammer. But I'm not going to make hammers because I have people that I'm friends with who make hammers and I want their hammers. But I might come up with something else that I make, a few other things, and that might end up bridging that gap so that you have consistent income. So we're going to see how that goes. But that's one of the things that I learned that you can't just make knives and be a knife maker unless you have the following so that whenever you make a knife, it's instantly sold and you can keep up with the demand of that and you're selling them for a good enough profit that it makes sense, then you're good to go. But if you're not, you got to have something else that you do to make it make sense. Some people have like farms. I mean, Neil Kawamura has his farm in Hawaii and he makes knives. Now, of course, his knives sell for a lot more than mine, but he has that extra income stream. Plus he travels and does things, but it's one of those things where you got to have the extra. If you don't, then you need a part-time job to have the extra. You got to do something because knife making by itself doesn't really bring home the bacon. And one of the things that I wanted was I kind of wanted to capture this income back so that I could actually put it back into the shop some more get some new cool toys, get some new cool tools. Now, one of the things that's going to help me is that I will be doing classes uh, here shortly. So that is going to bring in extra income, but it's got to be something. It can't just be classes. It's got to be other things too. But I think that one of those things that I didn't think about going into it was the extra and having those either you make tools or you make extra things like hatchets and hammers or you have a part-time job or something to bridge the gap within the income i didn't think about that at the beginning so what's going to be nice though is having this income like i said go back to being my extra income and having my regular job pay my bills so that i can do other cool things in here so i'm excited about that now would i become a full-time knife maker again that's the plan. <laughs> I know that I'm going to retire at some point and be a knife maker. So by default, yes, eventually I will be a full-time knife maker, but I'm only 40. I'm about to turn 40. So I don't plan on retiring for at least another probably 15 years. Now, will I eventually be a full-time knife maker? Yes, I will be. And I will go back into it, but I've got to plan it out. The last time that I went full-time knife making, it was because somebody else chose it for me. I got laid off from my job. I had this particular thing up and going. So I figured let's try out full-time knife making. The nice thing is the next time I decide to do full-time knife making, I will go into it voluntarily with a plan in place for it to actually make the income that I need it to make. So will I become a full-time knife maker at one point? Yes. Yes, I will. Just got to get all the ducks in a row, you know? And some of y'all that might be thinking about going full-time knife making, just remember what I said. It can't just be knife making. Unless you have an incredible following who, with, with people who want to buy all your stuff and you got to system down to make it make sense and you can sell enough knives and you're, you're able to pay your bills and have extra, cool, do your thing. But a lot of people are going to get into this and not realize that they need that extra income. So think about what else you can create to make income steadily if people aren't buying your knives. Hopefully that's helpful. If it is, let me know. Comment section down below. Guys, that's the end of this video. If you would, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Y'all have an amazing day. Y'all stay safe out there. I'll catch y'all next time.